Hello students, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss the chapter Drainage, the river system of India. India is blessed with thousands of rivers, large rivers, small rivers, uh, your uh, perennial river, non-perennial river. River is also a very important natural resource. All the life form on the earth's surface revolves around the water. And uh, the Indian river system has been evolved from a long geological past. So before we move on to the present river system, we should know how the Indian river system has evolved. So the basically the Indian river system has been divided into two, the Himalayan rivers and the peninsula rivers. The Himalayan rivers consist of river Indus, river Ganga and river Brahmaputra which is uh, which are originated uh, near Mansarovar lake south of Tibetan plateau and one thing those rivers if you noticed they flow parallel to the Himalayas and bend southward they flow in a very deep gorge now what is gorge gorge is the deep down cutting of the valleys now due to the presence of those gorges it is also believed that those river were existed even before the Himalay came into an existence which means the rivers were already present over there and it is a typical example of antecedent drainage now what is antecedent drainage antecedent drainage or streams means the existence of the streams even before the upliftment of the mountain across which they have maintained their path now this means those Himalayan river were already existed means the Himalayas was also rising at the same time the rivers were also down cutting their valleys according to the geologists there is a theory called Indo-Brahma theory in which they believe that there was a mighty river which used to flow from uh, Assam to Punjab and from Punjab to the south of Sindh and they finally drained to the Gulf of Sindh. Now Shivaliks also is to be believed that formed by the deposition of this mighty river Indo-Brahma or the it is also called Shivalik river. Now later on due to some reason this mighty river got distributed or dismemberment into the following river system Indus and its tributaries and the Ganga and its tributaries and Brahmaputra in Assam and its Himalayan tributaries. Now this dismemberment was caused due to the following factors. Upliftment of the western Himalayas means the Punjab Himalayas and all and also the Potwar Plateau. Potwar Plateau now it is in Pakistan. Another was the headward erosion. Now headward erosion means the erosion which occurs at the source of the river backward okay now those were the reasons for the uh, dismemberment of the uh, river, uh, this mighty river however there are many evidences which speaks against those this theory now first of all like it is not necessary to imagine such a big river was present in the geological past another Another like uh, evidence is the geological history of Ganga Brahmaputra Delta does not fit with the time period of this particular river. Another the another uh, like evidence is the discovery of the Tipam sand stones in Assam, which is at the estuary, which is suggested that it was deposited at the estuary of Brahma River, also speaks against this theory. Now another set of the river is the peninsula rivers. Now it is believed that the peninsula rivers existed much before the Himalayan rivers. Means the peninsula rivers are older than the Himalayan rivers. Now why it is believed so? It's because their valleys are broad, graded and shallow. Now this is possible only when the river attained its maturity age and where the lateral cutting is more than the vertical erosion and uh, the peninsula rivers most of it they flows from east to west direction with two exceptions that is the Narvada and Tapi river. This two river flows in a trough 
which is not even formed by them. Now, how those formed or the gods was formed? Now, due to the submergence of the western flank of peninsular plateau, and when the second distortion occur, the northern flank of the peninsula plateau got submerged. Now, due to this submergence, as a result, a trough faulting took place in that particular areas. Now, this Narbada and Tapi river flows in a trough which is the result of the submergence of the peninsular block. So, the Narbada and the Tapi river flows in a trough which is formed or which is the consequences of the trough faulting. So, in context with that, the Narvada and Tapi river is known as consequent drainage. This much for today and in the next video, I will be discussing about the uh, Himalayan rivers. So, if you find this video quite helpful, informative, then please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.